What's going on, guys? It's Steve. Now, the Utah Jazz and the Golden State Warriors play tonight. And I will sit here and I'll say this. The Utah Jazz will probably get swept just like the Toronto Raptors. And I didn't make a video about this today, but I'll say the DeRozan showed up big time. He showed up big time. Excuse me, I have to... Geez. Oh, my gosh. DeRozan showed up big time. No, I'm not going to start the video. Whatever. DeMar DeRozan showed up huge. He played extremely well. He, I think he had like 20 points in the first. He was great. But fourth quarter time, they got absolutely annihilated by LeBron James. It was ridiculous. LeBron was hitting three after three. after. It was, it was crazy. But that's not the point of the video. The point of the video is to preview the Utah Jazz and the Golden State Warriors. How can the Utah Jazz defeat the Golden State Warriors? Now, Utah is one of the best defensive teams in the NBA. We understand that. He, the Utah Jazz are one of the best defensive teams in the NBA. Now, the obvious answer, offense. You can't win against the Golden State Warriors by playing great defense. Because defensively, there's nothing you can do to stop this team. It's exactly like the Cleveland Cavaliers. They're so stacked. That if you double-team Kyrie, Kevin Love's right there for the three. Or Channing Fry, Or Kyle Corver. Did you see Kyle Corver hit like four threes in a row yesterday? Oh my gosh. Hard threes, two off screens, leaning to it. It's right. It's crazy. Right? So you can't stop Cleveland or Golden State. Now, you obviously have to play defense to make them work. But no matter what you do, they're still going to score 100 plus points. 120, 15, 115, 110, whatever. 105, whatever. Golden State's case, probably 180. Let me stop. But yeah, you have to... When, by playing great offense, you have to out, and this sounds obvious, but think about it. You have to outplay them on the offensive end. Gordon Hayward, you need to have a big game. You, look, your team doesn't have a lot of offensive players. You are their main scorer and pretty much their only dominant scorer. So you can't give 20, 25. I understand you're not a superstar. You're fairly young in terms of experience. I think he's like 26, actually. But in terms of experience, he's fairly young. Okay, I understand all of these things. But you need to come out and drop 35, 40, okay? You need to have a big first half. Rudy Gobert, you need to lock down the paint, okay? Well, I, is he injured? I, I think he, I don't think he's injured. Whatever. They need to lock down the paint. This is what they need to do on defense, though, to get the ball out of Stephen Curry's hands. Now, it's not going to help, but this is what they need to do. They need to get the ball out of Stephen Curry's hands. How? Anytime you see that screen coming. Listen, on defense, you don't watch the ball at all times. You're supposed to watch the ball. But with Stephen Curry, don't watch the ball. Watch for the screens. Because you already know, every single possession, the ball is going to him or Kevin Durant. So don't watch the ball while guarding Curry. Go over the screen. They usually screen down low towards the paint, whether it's on the left or right wing, but usually 10, 15, no, not even, like 12 to 10 feet away from the rim. That's where Curry gets the screens. He curls under the basket all the way around to the opposite wing behind the three-point line. So what do you do? You set a trap. You set a trap. Listen, Steph, if Stephen Curry curls, you go over the screen. That way, you meet him at the three-point line. You go up over the screen, meaning where the free throw line is, to meet him at the wing at the three-point line. Okay, so you cut midway through, you cut through the free throw line to the three-point line to meet Stephen Curry. Or if Stephen Curry decides to go from under the basket all the way back around to the same side he just came from, that person that was defending the guy who had the screen, that's when that person defending the guy who set the screen goes up to Curry. And there you go. He's trapped either way. He's gonna, there's going to be a man on in his face while shooting either way. That's the only way to do it. You, you have to force someone else to score. I know it sounds crazy. Why would you let you know someone have an easy two-point jump shot? It's all about rotating. The big man who's in the paint guarding, let's say, Draymond Green or whatever, because Draymond Green usually sets the screen, let's say Zaza. Whoever's guarding Zaza, okay, and they give it to Draymond, and Draymond tries to drive to the basket from 10 feet away, you just step in, and then he has to force it to Zaza. And then guess what? Whoever's behind Zaza... Or to the left of Zaza in the corner. Because that's how Golden State usually spaces it. Klay Thompson standing in the corner. Whoever's at the corner, come in. And then if they pass to Klay Thompson before they pass it, you see the pass coming. You rotate. And then the same person who's rotating from Curry, you rotate to KD at the top. 
Now you're going to say, but Steve, now Stephen Curry is going to be wide open. It's going to take the ball at least two seconds to get from that end of the court to the end, other end of the court from a pass to whoever's going to pass to Stephen Curry. Okay? Which means you have a two-second gap to recover, and you just keep rotating. Rotate, 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 rotate. That's all you have to do against this team. Just rotate, 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 rotate. Just get the ball out of Stephen Curry's hands. Anyone else besides Curry, okay? Kevin Durant, you can let Kevin Durant score. Let, let, let him do his thing. But don't let Stephen Curry do his thing. Because Kevin Durant is a different score. Kevin Durant is, okay, he'll hit a few threes here and there. He's a great shooter. But he's not going to come here, hit five threes in a row, and then out of nowhere, you, now you're down by 15. Okay? Stephen Curry is going to, if he hits one, okay, he's going to come back. Okay, guess what? You're going to come back again. Okay, that's, that's nine points. Four, that's 12 points. Now you're down by 12. Or they just added 12 points to their lead. You can't let Stephen Curry get the ball. Get, just force the ball out of his hands. Allow anyone else besides Steph and Clay to score. And it sounds crazy because you probably think like Kevin Durant's the best scorer in the NBA. He is. But he is not a three point dominant scorer like Curry and Clay Thompson. He's not a three point dominant scorer like those two. So I would prefer him and Draymond Green to be scoring, KD and Draymond Green to be scoring, than Stephen Curry and Clay Thompson. So that is why you have to do what I just said with Stephen Curry. Because that's all he does now. In terms of the pick and roll with Stephen Curry, he likes to get that pick and roll at the top of the key, switch, and then they get the big man on him. If that's the case, okay, if you get the big man on Stephen Curry, just force him. And th this is hard because Stephen Curry, he'll pull up from five feet behind the three-point line. It, it doesn't matter where he is. He'll pull up from five feet behind the three-point line, okay? So what you have to do in that pick and roll situation is just try not to switch. Just, just call him out and go over that screen. That's all you have to do. It's just fight over the screen, call out the screen early, or have the coach screaming, screen right, screen left, and step over it. Step all the way over it. I know sometimes it's easier said than done. It, uh, not sometimes. It's always easier said than done. But step over the damn screen. No excuses. Step over that. Force Stephen Curry to either play the guard, whoever's guarding Curry, one-on-one, -on -one, or give up the ball and try to run around for a pick or a screen. And again, you do the same thing that I explained earlier in this video. Now, Clay Thompson. How do you guard Clay Thompson shooting the threes? This is the really tough part in terms of Golden State. Because Golden State has Kevin Durant, who will drop 45 on your head and you'll lose. But they also have Steph and Clay, who are counting by threes. So you can't let them get hot. So, Klay Thompson, how do you stop him? What does Klay Thompson usually do? He doesn't really dribble and come off picks and screens with the dribble. He catches it, shoots it, or he'll catch, you'll jump for it, or he'll drive straight to the basket. Klay Thompson is a catch-and-shoot player. A glorified catch-and-shoot player, because this dude is a freaking animal. One of the best shooters I've ever seen in my life. Just pure, amazing jump shot. It's like God is touching his wrist when he's shooting. It's ridiculous, okay? No need to offend anyone when I say God, because we all have our own gods. Whatever. No debates about religion. Whatever. So how do you stop Klay Thompson? It's simple. Deny him the ball. You know, I, I see people in the NBA, players in the NBA, play so fucking lazy on defense that it pisses me off. Why are you playing lazy on defense? All you have to do, and I know it's easier said than done again, deny him the ball. Don't give him any space when he doesn't have the ball. Just play all the way up on him. Hug him. They hold in the NBA. They hold jerseys. They hold shorts, all this other crap. Hug him. Don't allow him to get the ball. Just literally play all, not with your arms, with your legs and your chest. Body him, no matter where he is. On the perimeter, you can body with your chest. Don't touch him with your hands because that's a foul, but body him. If you can do that, I'll tell you right now, Klay Thompson will be out of the game because now he has to work just to get open, Okay? Stephen Curry has to work just to get open. So now, guess what they're going to do? Pass it up to Kevin Durant. And again, I'd prefer KD to go off than Steph. Because KD, he'll hit a few threes in the game, probably three or four threes. But he's not going to give you 12 threes if he gets hot like Stephen Curry or Klay Thompson will. Okay? Whereas, you know, it'll probably give you like, what, two threes and then a lot of inside post shots and dunks and things like that. 
probably give you 45 from there. Whereas Curry, guess what? He's going to give you a few layups here and there, mostly threes though. Okay, we're talking about $100 million contracts for all of these players. It's crazy. So that is how they will defeat the Golden State Warriors. Now, obviously, it's always easier said than done. It probably won't happen. They'll probably get swept. But I'm glad that Gordon Hayward is getting this exposure because this guy, just like Kawhi was last year, is one step away from becoming an NBA superstar. He's one step away. He just needs that playoff experience. Like, it took Kawhi a little bit to get that experience to realize, like, whoa, okay, I see what I need to do. And look at him now. This dude's one of the best players on the planet. So Gordon Hayward's, like, one step away from that. Anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's been your man, Steve. I'm out. Peace.